Easter Day by Robert Browning. How very hard it is to be a Christian, hard for you and me, not the mere task of making real that duty up to its ideal, affecting thus complete and whole a purpose or the human soul, for that is always hard to do, but hard, I mean, for me and you, to realize it more or less with even the moderate success which commonly repays our strife to carry out the aims of life. This aim is greater, you may say, and so more arduous every way. But the importance of the fruits still proves to man in all pursuits proportional encouragement. Then what if it be God's intent that labor to this one result shall seem unduly difficult? Ah, that's a question in the dark, and the sole thing that I remark upon the difficulty this, we do not see it where it is at the beginning of the race. As we proceed, it shifts its place, and where we look for palms to fall, we find the tugs to come, that's all. At first you say, the whole or chief of difficulties is belief. Could I believe once thoroughly the rest were simple? What? Am I an idiot? Do you think? A beast? Prove to me only that the least command of God is God's indeed, and what injunction shall I need to pay obedience? Death so nigh, when time must end eternity, begin and cannot I compute, weigh loss and gain together suit, my actions to the balance drawn, and give my body to be sawn, asunder, hacked in pieces, tied to horses, stone, burned, crucified, like any martyr of the list? How gladly, if I made a quist, through the brief minutes for fierce annoy of God's eternity of joy. And certainly you name the point whereon all turns, for could you joint this flexible finite life once tight into the fixed and infinite, you safe inside would spurn what's out, with carelessness enough, no doubt, would spurn mere life, but where time brings to their next stage your reasonings, your eyes late wide begin to wink, nor see the past so well, I think. You say, faith may be one agrees, a touchstone for God's purposes, even as ourselves conceive of them. Could he acquit us or condemn for holding what no hand can loose, rejecting when we can't but choose, as well award the victor's wreath to whosoever should take breath, Duly each minute while he lived, grant heaven, because a man contrived to see the sunlight every day, he walked forth on the public way. You must mix some uncertainty with faith, if you would have faith be. Why, what but faith do we abhor, and idolize each other for, faith in our evil or our good, which is or is not understood? All right, by those we love or those we hate, thence called our friends or foes? Your mistress saw your spirit's grace when turning from the ugly face. I found belief in it too hard, and both of us have our reward. Yet here a doubt peeps well for us, weak beings, to go using thus a touchstone for our little ends, and try with faith the foes and friends. But God bethink you, I would fain conceive of the Creator's reign as based upon exactor laws, than creatures build by with applause. In all God's acts, as Plato cries, he doth, he should ge geometricize, whence I des desertate. I see, you would grow smoothly as a tree, soar heavenward, straightly up like fire. God bless you, there's your world entire, needing no faith if you think fit. Go there, walk up and down it. The whole creation travails, groans, contrive your music from its moans, without or let or, or hindrance friend. That's an old story, and its end, as old, you come back, be sincere with every question you put here. Here, where there once was and is still, we think a living oracle, whose answers you stood carping at. This time flung back unanswered flat, besides perhaps as many more as those that drove you out before. Now added, where was little need, questions impossible indeed, to us who sate still all in each, persuaded that our earth had speech, of God's writ down, no matter if, in cursive type or hieroglyph, which one fact frees us from the yoke of guessing why he never spoke. You come back in no better plight than when you left us. Am I right? 
So the old process, I conclude, goes on. The reasonings pursued further, you own. Tis well averred, a scientific face absurd. Frustrates the very end was meant to serve. So I would rest content with a mere probability. But probable? The chance must lie clear on one side, light all in rough. So long as there is just enough to pin my faith to, though it hap only at points from gap to gap, one hangs up a huge curtain so grandly, nor seeks to have it go, foldless and flat along the wall. What care I that some interval of life less plainly might depend on God? I'd hang there to the end, and thus I should not find it hard to be a Christian and debarred from trailing on the earth till furled away by death. Renounce the world? Were that a mighty hardship? Plan a pleasant life and straight some man beside you with, if he thought fit, abundant means to compass it? Shall turn deliberate aside to try and live as, if you tried, you clearly might yet most despise. One friend of mine wears out his eyes, sliding the stupid joys of sense in patient hope that ten years hence, somewhat completer he may see. He list of Lepidoptera. While just the other, who most laughs at him above all epitaphs, aspires to have his tomb describe himself as soul among the tribe of snuff-box fanciers who possessed a grignon in the regent's crest, so that subduing as you want whatever stands predominant among my earthly appetites for tastes and smells and sounds and sights, I shall be doing that alone to gain a palm branch and a throne which fifty people undertake to do and gladly for the sake of giving a Semitic guess or playing pawns at blindfold chest. Good, and the next thing is, look round for evidence enough. Tis found, no doubt, as is your sort of mind, so is your sort of search. You'll find what you desire, and that's to be a Christian. What says history? How comforting a point it were to find some mummy scrap declare. There lived a Moses. Better still prove Jonah's whale translatable into some quicksand of the seas. Isle, cavern, rock, or what you please. That faith might clap her wings and crow from such an eminence. Or no, the human heart's best. You prefer making that prove the minister to truth. You probe its wants and needs and hopes and fears. Then try what creeds meet these most aptly resolute. That faith plucks sub substantial fruit. Wherever these two correspond, she little needs to look beyond to puzzle out what Orpheus was or Dionysus Zagreus. You'll find sufficient, as I say, to satisfy you either way. You wanted to believe your pains are crowned. You do, and what remains? Renounce the world. Ah, were it done by merely cutting one by one your limbs off with your wise head last. How easy were it, how soon pass, if once in the believing mood... Such is man's usual gratitude. Such thanks to God do we return. For not exactly that we spurn. A single gift of life forego. One real gain only taste them so. With gravity and temperance that those mild virtues may enhance. Such pleasures rather than abstract. Last spice of which will be the fact of love discerned in every gift. While when the scene of life shall shift, and the gay heart be taught to ache, as sorrows and privations take, the place of joy, the thing that seems mere misery under human schemes, becomes regarded by the light of love as very near or quite, as, as good a gift as joy before, so plain is it that all the more God's dispensations merciful, more pettishly we try and call briars thistles from our private plot to mar God's ground where thorns are not. Do you say this or I? O oh, you! Then what, my friend, so I pursue our parley? You indeed opine that the eternal and divine did eighteen centuries ago, in very truth, enough! You know the all-stupendous tale, that birth, that life, that death, and all the earth shuddered at. All the heavens grew black rather than see, all nature's rack, and those at dissolution's brink, Attested, it took place, you think, only to give our joys a zest and prove our sorrows for the best. We differ, then, were I still pale and heart-struck at the dreadful tale, waiting to hear God's voice declare what horror followed for my share, as implicated in the deed apart from other sins concede. 
that if he blacked out in a blot, my brief life's pleasantness were not so very disproportionate. Or there might be another fate I certainly could understand if fancies were the thing in hand. How God might save at that day's price the impure in their impurities. Leave formal license and complete to choose the fair and pick the sweet. But there be certain words broad plain uttered again and yet again. Hard to mistake to overgloss announcing the, this world's gain for loss and bidding us reject the same. The whole world lieth, they proclaim, and wickedness come out of it. Turn a deaf ear if you think fit, but I who thrill through every nerve a thought of what deaf ears deserve, how do you counsel in that case? I take by all means in your place. The safe side, since it so appears, deny myself a few brief years. The natural pleasure, leave the fruit, or cut the plant up by the root. Remember what a martyr said on the rude tablet overhead. I was born sickly, poor, and mean. A slave, no misery could see, screen. The holders of the pearl of price, from Caesar's envy, therefore twice. I fought with beasts, and three times saw my children suffer by his law. At last my own release was earned. I was sometime in being burned. But at the close a hand came through the fire above my head and drew my soul to Christ, whom now I see Sergius, a brother, writes for me this testimony on the wall. For me, for me I have forgot it all. You say right, this were not so hard. And since one no wise is debarred from this, why not escape some sins by such a method? Then begins to the old point, revulsion new, for tis just this I bring you to. If after all we should mistake and so renounce life for the sake of death and nothing else, you hear our friends we jeered at, send the jeer back to ourselves with good effect. There were my beetles to collect, my box a trifle, I confess, but here I, I hold it nevertheless. Poor idiots, let us pluck up heart and answer, we the better part. Have chosen, though twere only hope, nor envy moles like you that grope. I made your veritable muck more than the grasshoppers would truck. For yours their passionate life away that spins itself and leaps all day. To reach the sun you want the eyes, to see as they the wings to rise and match the noble hearts of them. So the contemner we contemn, and when doubt strikes us, so we ward. Its stroke off caught upon our guard, not struck enough to overturn our faith, but shake it. Make us learn what I began with, and I was in having proved how hard it is to be a Christian. Proved or not, however you wish, small thanks I wot, you get of mine for taking pains, to make it hard for to me, who gains by that I wonder. Here I live in trusting ease, and do you drive at causing me to lose what most yourself would mourn for when twas loss? But do you see, my friend, that thus you leave St. Paul for Aeschylus, who made his titan's arch device, the giving men blind hopes to spice, the meal of life with else devoured in bitter haste while low death lowered. Before them at the platter's edge, faith should be, as we allege, quite other than a condiment to heighten flavors with or mint, like that brave curry of his grace to take at need the victual's place. If having dined, you would digest, besides in turning to your rest, should find instead... Now you shall see and judge of a mere foppery pricks of my speaking. I resolve to utter. Yes, it shall devolve on you to hear us as solemn, strange, and dread a thing as in the range of facts or fancies. If God will ever happen to our kind, I still stand in the cloud, and while it wraps my face, I ought not to speak, perhaps, seeing that as I carry through my purpose, if my words and you find veritable listeners, my story reasons self avers. Must needs be false the happy chance, while if each human countenance I meet in London streets all day, be what I fear, my warnings fray. No one and no one they convert, and no one helps me to assert how hard it is to really be a Christian, and in vacancy I pour the story. I commence by trying to inform you, whence it comes that every Easter night, as now I sit up, watch till light, shall break those chimney stacks and roof, Give through my window pane great proofs that Easter day is breaking slow on such a night three years ago. It chanced that I had caused to cross the common where the chapel was. 
our friend spoke of the other day. You've not forgotten, I dare say. I felt amusing of the time, so close the blessed matin prime. All hearts leap up at in some guise. One could not well do otherwise. Insensibly my thoughts were bent. Toward the main point I overwent. Much the same ground of reasoning as you and I just now one thing. Remained, however, one that tasked my soul to answer. And I asked fairly and frankly what might be that history, the, that faith to me, me there, not me in some domain, built up and peopled my, by my brain, weighing its merits as one weighs, mere theories for blame or praise, the kingcraft of the Lucamons, uh, or Furrier's scheme, its pros and cons, but as my faith, or none at all, how were my case now should I fall, dead here this minute, do I lie, faithful or faithless? Note that I inclined thus ever, little prone, for instance, when I slept alone, in childhood to go calm to sleep, and leave a closet where might keep, his watch produce some murderer, waiting till twelve o'clock to stir, as good authentic legends tell, he might, but how improbable, how little likely to deserve the pains and trial to the nerve of thrusting head into the dark, urged my old nurse and bade me mark besides that should the dreadful scout really lie hid there to leap out at first turn of the rusty key if were small gain that she could see in being killed upon the floor and losing one night's sleep the more i tell you i would almost burst the door open no my fate at first this time indeed the closest the closet pinned, no such assassin but a friend, rather peeped out to guard me, fit for counsel, common sense to wit. Who said a good deal that might pass heartening and partial too? It was Judge Else. For soberly now, who should be a Christian if not you? Hear how he smoothed me down. One takes a whole life, sees what course it makes, mainly and not by fits and starts, in spite of stoppage which imparts fresh value to the general speed. A life with none would fly, indeed, your progressing is slower, right? We deal with progressing, not flight, through baffling senses, passionate fancies, as restless with a fright. Freight of knowledge cumbersome enough to sink your ship when waves grow rough not serve as ballast in the hold i find mid dangers manifold the good bark answers to the helm where faith sits easier to overwhelm than some stout peasant's heavenly guide whose head hard head could not if it tried conceive a doubt or understand how senses hornier than his hand should tice the christian off his guard more happy but shall we award less honor to the hull which dogged by storms a mere wreck waterlogged masked by the board and bulwarks gone and stanchions going yet bears on than to mere lifeboats built to save and triumph over the breaking wave make perfect your good ship as these and what were her performances i added would the ship reach home i wish indeed god's kingdom come the day when i shall see appear his bidding as my duty clear from doubt and it shall dawn that day some future reason easter some future season easter may prove not impossibly the time yes that were striking fates would chime so aptly easter morn to bring the judgment deeper in the spring than now however when there's snow capping the hills for earth must show all signs of meaning to pursue her task as she was wont to do the lark is taken by surprise as we ourselves shall recognize sudden the end for suddenly it comes the dreadfulness must be in that all warrants the belief at night it cometh like a thief i fancy why the trumpet blows plainly to wake one from repose we shall start up at last awake from life that insane dream we take for waking now because it seems and as when now we wake from dreams we say while well, we recall them fool to let the chance slip linger cool when such adventure offered just a bridge to cross a dwarf to thrust aside a wicked mage to stab and lo ye i had kissed queen mab so shall we marvel why why we grudge our labors here and idly fudge judge of heaven we might have gained but lose lose talk of loss and i refuse to plead at all i speak no worse nor better than my ancient nurse when she would tell me in my youth i well deserve that shapes uncouth should fright and tease me in my sleep why did i not in my me in memories keep her precept for the evil's cure pinch her own arm boy and be sure you'll wake forthwith <clears throat> A 
And as I said, this nonsense throwing back my head, with light complacent laughed I found, suddenly all the midnight round, one fire, the dome of heaven had stood, as made up of a multitude, of hand cloudlets, one vast rack, of ripples infinite in black, from sky to sky, sudden there went, like horror and astonishment, a fierce vindictive scribble of red, quick flames across, as if one said, the angry scribe of judgment, there burn it, and straight I was aware, that the whole rib work, round minute, cloud touching cloud beyond compute, was tinted each with its own spot, of burning at the core till clot, jammed against clot, and spilt as its fire, over all heaven, which gan suspire, as fanned to measure equable, as when great conflagrations kill, night overhead and rise and sink, reflected, now the fire would shrink, and whither off the blasted face of heaven and I distinct could trace, the sharp black ridgy outlines left, unburned like network, then each cleft, the fire had been sucked back into, regorged and out its surging flew, furiously and night writhed in flame, till tolerating to be tamed, no longer certain rays worldwide, shot downwardly on every side, caught past escape, the earth was lit as if a dragon's nostril split. And all his famished ire overflowed, then as he winced at his lord's goad, back he inhaled, whereat I found the clouds into vast pillars bound, based on the corners of the earth, propping the skies at top a dearth of fire eye the violet intervals, leaving exposed the utmost walls of time about to tumble in and in the world. I felt begin the judgment day to retrocede was too late now and ever in very deed. I uttered to myself that day the intuition burned away, all darkness from my spirit too. There stood I found and fixed I knew, choosing the world. The choice was made and naked and disguiseless stayed, and inevitable the fact uh, and unevadable fa the fact my brain held never less compact, its senses nor my heart declined. Its office, rather, both combined to help me in this juncture. I lost not a second agony, gave boldness there my life had end, and my choice with it best defend. Applaud them, I resolved to say, say. So was I framed by thee this way. I put to use thy senses here. It was so beautiful, so near. Thy world, what could I do but choose? My part there, nor did I refuse, to look above the transient boon. In time, but it was hard so soon as in a short life to give up such beauty. I had put the cup, undrained of half its fullness by, but to renounce it utterly. That was too hard, nor did the cry, which bade renounce it, touch my brain, authentically deep and plain, enough to make my lips let go. But thou who knowest all dost know, whether I was not life's brief while, endeavoring to reconcile those lips too heartily, alas, to letting the dear remnant pass, one day some drops of earthly good, untasted, is it for this mood, that thou whose earth delights so well has made it compliment a hell. A final belch of fire like blood overbroke all, next in one flood of doom. Then fire was sky, and sky was fire, and both one ecstasy, then ashes. But I heard no noise. Whatever was, because a voice, besides me spoke thus, all is done. Time ends, eternities begin, begun, and thou art judged forevermore. I looked up, all was as before, of that cloud tofed overhead, no trace was left, I saw instead, the common round me and the sky, above stretched drear and emptily of life, t'was the last watch of night, except what brings the morning quite, when the armed angel conscience clear, his task night done, leans over his spear, and gazes on the earth he guards, safe one night more through all its wards, till God relieve him at his post, a dream, a waking dream at most. I spoke out quick that I might shake the horror nightmare off and wake. The world's gone, yet the world is here. Are not all things as they appear? Is judgment passed from me alone? And where had placed the great white throne? The rising of the quick and the dead? 
Where stood they, small and great, who read the sentence from the open book? So by degrees the blood forsook my heart and let it beat afresh. I knew I should break through the mesh of horror and breathe presently, when lo, again the voice by me. I saw, O oh brother, mid far sands, the palm tree cinctured city stands, bright white beneath as heaven bright blue above it while the years pursue their course unable to abate its paradisal laugh at faith one morn the arab staggers blind over a new tract of death calcined to ashes silence nothingness striving with dizzy wits to guess whence fell the blow what if twixt skies and prostrate earth he should surprise the imaged vapor head to foot surveying motionless and mute its work ere in a whirlwind wrapped it vanished up again so hap my chance he stood there like the smoke pillared over sodom when day broke i saw him one magnific pall mantled in massive fold and fall his dread and coiled and snaky swaths about his feet nights black that bathes all else broke grizzled with despair against the soul of blackness there a gesture told the mood within that wrapped right hand which based the chin that intense meditation fixed on his procedure pity mixed with the fulfillment of decree motionless thus he spoke to me who fell before his feet a mass no man now all has come to pass such shows are over for each soul they had respect too in the role of judgment which convinced mankind of sin stood many bold and blind terror must burn the truth into their fate for them thou hast to do with absolute omnipotence able its judgment to dispense to the whole race as every one were its sole object that is done god as thou art the rest is hurled to nothingness for thee this world, this finite life, thou hast preferred, in disbelief of God's own word, to heaven and to infinity, here the probation was for thee, to show thy soul the earthly mixed with heavenly, it must choose betwixt, the earthly joys lay palpable, a taint in each distinct as well, the heavenly fitted faint and rare, above them but as truly were, taintless so in their nature best, thy choice was earth, thou didst attest, to us flitter spirit should subserve, the flesh then flesh refined to nerve beneath the spirit's play advance no claim to their inheritance who chose the spirit's fugitive brief gleams and thought this were to live indeed if rays completely pure from flesh that dulls them should endure not shoot in meteor light athwart our earth to show how cold and swart it lies beneath their fire but stand as stars should destined to expand prove veritable worlds our home thou saidst let spirit star the dome of sky that flesh may miss no peak no nook of earth i shall not seek its service further thou art shut out of the heavens of spirit glut thy sense upon the world tis thine forever take it how is mine the world i cried while my soul broke out in a transport hast thou spoke plainly in that earth's exquisite treasures of wonder and delight for me the austere voice returned so soon made happy hast thou learned what god accounteth happiness thou wouldst not find it hard to guess what hell may be his punishment for those who doubt if God invent better than they, let such men rest, content with what they judge the best. Let the unjust usurp at will, the filthy shall be filthy still. Miser there waits for the gold for thee, hater indulge thy enmity. And thou, whose heaven self-ordained was to enjoy earth unrestrained, do it, take all the ancients show. The woods shall wave, the rivers flow, and men apparently pursue their works as they want to do. While living in probation, yet I promise not thou shalt forget the past now gone to its account, but leave thee with the old amount of faculties, nor less nor more, unvisited as that heretofore, by God's free spirit that makes an end, so once more take thy world, expend eternity upon its shows, flung thee as freely as one rose out of a summer's opulence over the Eden barrier, whence thou art excluded, knock in vain. I sate up 
All was still again. I breathed free to my heart, back fled. The warmth, but all the world, I said. I stooped and picked a leaf of fern and recollected I might learn from books how many myriad sorts exist if one may trust reports, each as distinct and beautiful as this, the very first I call. Think from the first leaf to the last. Conceived in earth's resources. Vast, exhaustless beauty, endless change of wonder. And this foot shall range. Alps, Andes, and this I devour. The bee bird and the aloe flower. And the voice, welcome so to rate the heiress folds that variegate the earth gold's ch antechamber well. The wise who waited there could tell by these what royalties in store lay one step past the entrance door for whom was reckoned not too much that this life's magnificence for such as thou a race whereof not one was able in a million to feel that any marvel lay in objects round his feet all day nor one in many millions more willing if able to explore the secret minute or charm brave souls a fern leaf could disarm of power to cope with god's intent of scared scarred if the south firmament with north fire did its wings refledge all partial beauty was a pledge of beauty in its plenitude but since the pledge suffice thy mood retain it plenitude be theirs who looked above Thou sharp despair shot through me, I held up, bore on, what is it through my thrust is, trust is gone, from natural things henceforth my part, be less with nature than with art, for art supplants give mainly worth, to nature tis man stamps the earth, and I will seek his impress, seek the statu statuary of the Greek, Italy's painting, there my choice shall fix. Obtain it, said the voice. The one form with its single act, which sculptors labored to abstract, the one face painters tried to draw, with its one look from throngs they saw, and that perfection in their soul, these only hinted at, the whole they were but parts of, what each laid his claim to glory on, afraid his fellow men should give him rank, by the poor tentatives he shrank, smitten at heart from all the more, that gazers... Pressed into a door, shall I be judged by only these? If such his soul's capacities, even while he trod the earth, think now what pomp and Bunarati's brow with its new palace brain where dwells, superb the soul unvexed by cells that crumbled with the transient clay. What visions will his right hand sway still turn to form as still they burst upon him? How will he quench thirst, the titanically infantine laid at the breast of the divine? Does it confound thee, this first page, emblazoning man's heritage? Can this alone absorb thy sight, as if thy were not infinite? Like the omnipotence which tasks itself to furnish all that ass, the soul it means to satiate? What was the world, the starry state of the broad skies? What all displays of power and beauty intermixed, which now thy soul is changed betwixt? What else the needful furniture for life's first stage? God's work be sure, no more spreads wasted than false scant he filled did not exceed man's want of beauty in his in this life and past life's line. And what has earth to do? Its utmost beauty's appendage with the requirements of next stage did god pronounce earth very good needs must it be well understood for man's preparatory state nothing to heighten nor abate but transfer the completeness here to serve a new state's use and drear deficiency gapes every side the good tried once were bad retried see the enwrapping rocky niche sufficient for the sleep in which the lizard breathes for ages safe split, split the mold, and as this would chafe, the creature's new world widened since one minute after you dispense. The thousand sounds and sights that broke in on him as the chisel stroke, so in God's eyes the earth's first stuff was neither more nor less enough to house man's soul, man's needs need fulfill, you reckon it immeasurable. So thinks the lizard of his vault. Could God be taken in default, short of contrivances by you, or reached ere ready to pursue his progress through eternity? That chambered rock, the lizard's world, your easy mallet's blow has hurled to nothingness forever. So has God abolished at a blow this world wherein his saints were pent, who, though found grateful and content, with the provision there as thou yet knew he would not disallow their spirits hunger felt as well unsated not unsatable as paradise gives proof 
deride their choice now, thou who sittest outside. I cried in anguish, mind the man, so miserably cast behind, to gain what had been wisely lost. Oh, let me strive to make the most of the poor stinted soul. I nipped of budding wings, else well equipped, for voyage from summer isle to isle. And though she needs must reconcile ambition to the life on ground, still I can profit by late found, but precious knowledge mind is best. I will seize mine, forego the rest, and try far, how far my tethered strength may crawl in this poor breadth and length. Let me, since I can fly no more, at least spin dervish like a bout, till giddy rapture almost doubt I fly through circling sciences, philosophies, and histories. Should the world slacken there, then verse, finding to music shall asperse, fresh and fresh fire do, till I strain, intoxicate, half break my chain, not joyless through, though more favored feet, stand calm where I want wings to beat, the floor at least, earth's bond is broke. Then, sickening even while I spoke, let me alone, no answer, pray to this. I know that thou wilt say, all still is earth, to know as much as feel its truce, which if we touch with sense or apprehend in soul, what matter? I have reached the goal. Whereto does knowledge serve? Will burn my eyes to sure at every turn. I cannot look back now, nor stake bliss on the race for running's sake. The goal's a ruin like the rest, and so much worse the latter quest, added the voice, that even on earth, whenever in man's soul had birth, those intuitions grasp of guess that pull the more into the less, making the finite comprehend infinity the bard would spend such praise alone upon his craft, as when wind leers obey the waft, goes to the craftsman who arranged the seven strings, changed them and rechanged, knowing it was the south that harped, he felt his song and singing warped, distinguishes in God's part, whence a world of spirit as of sense was plain to him, yet not too plain, which he could traverse, not remain, a guest in, elsewhere permanent, heaven upon earth, it gleams were meant, to sting with hunger for the light, made visible in verse, despite the veiling weakness, truth by means of fable showing while it screens since highest truth man ever supplied was ever fabled on outside such gleams may bright the earth and age now the whole sums is heritage take up thy world it is allowed thou who hast entered in the cloud then I behold my spirit bleeds, catches no more at broken reeds, but lilies flower those reeds above. I let the world go and take love. Love survives in me, albeit those I loved are henceforth masks and shows. Not loving men and women still, I mind how long repaired all ill. Cured wrong, soothed grief, made earth amends with parents, brothers, children's friends. Some semblance of a woman yet, with eyes to help me to forget, shall live with me, and I will match. Departed love with love attach its fragments to my whole, nor scorn the poorest of the grains of corn. I save from shipwreck on this isle, trusting its barrenness may smile. With happy, foodful green one day, more precious for the pains, I pray, for love then only. At the word, the form, I look to have been stirred with pity and approval rose. Over me as when the headman throws axe over shoulder to make end. I fell prone, letting him expend his wrath while thus the inflicting voice smote me. Is this thy final choice? Love is the best. Tis somewhat late, and all thou dost enumerate of power and beauty in the world. The mightiest of love was curled inextricably round about. Love lay within and without to clasp thee, but in vain. Thy soul still shrunk from him who made the whole, still set deliberate aside. His love, now take love, will betide thy tardy conscience. Haste to take the show of love for the name's sake, remembering every moment who reside creating thee unto these ends and these for thee was said to undergo death in thy stead in flesh like thine so ran the tale what doubt in thee could countervail belief in it upon the ground that in the story had been found too much love how could god love so he who in all his works below adapted to the needs of man may love the basis of the plan did love as was demonstrated while man who was so fit instead to hate as every day gave proof you thought man for his kind behoof both could and would invent that scheme of perfect love twould well beseem cain's nature thou wast wont to praise not tally with god's usual ways and i cowered deprecatingly 
thou love of God, or let me die, or grant what shall seem heaven almost, let me not know that all is lost, thou lost it be, leave me not tied, to this despair, this corpse-like bride, let that old life seem mine no more, with limitations so as before, with darkness, hunger, toil, distress, be all the earth a wilderness, only let me go on, go on, still hoping ever and anon, to reach one eve the better land. Then did the form expand, expand, I knew him through the dread disguise, as the whole God within his eyes embraced me. When I lived again, the day was breaking. The gray plain I rose from, silver thick and with dew. Was this a vision, false or true? Since then, three varied years are spent, and commonly my dream is bid. To think it was a dream, be sure, a mere dream and distemperature. The last day's watching, then the night. The shock of that strange northern light set my head swimming, bred in me. A dream, and so I live, you see. Go through the world, try, prove, reject, prefer still struggling to effect. My warfare, happy that I can, be crossed and thwarted as a man, not left in God's contempt apart, with ghastly smooth life dead at heart, tame in earth's paddocks as her prize. Thank God she still each method tries to catch me who may yet escape. She knows the fiend and angel shape. Thank God no paradise stands barred to entry and I find it hard to be a Christian as I said. Still every now and then my head raised glad sinks mournful all grows drear spite of the sunshine while I fear and think how dreadful to be grudged no ease henceforth as one less judged condemned to earth forever shut from heaven. But Easter day breaks, but Christ rises, mercy every way is infinite, and who can say?